You hate And in UAE, this is one city. Dubai. Right? And in Dubai, there are so many buildings, so many homes and apartments. So many stories. Although we're so insignificant, although we're so tiny in relationship to the whole universe, we're still thinking, I'm the control. And sometimes people even meditate like that. They're thinking, I am controlling the sun, I am controlling the moon. And next minute they're saying, give me a cigarette. <laughs> or give me a cup of tea. <laughs> they, they cannot even control their tongue. But they're thinking they can control the moon or the sun. So this is the foolishness of people who try to pursue that path of meditation. They're thinking themselves to be controllers, but actually they're all Control. Who is the controller? Ishwara. Yes, we say Ishwara Paramahamsa. You know this one? You don't know? Oh, you're all well read. Huh? You know something? So Krishna is the supreme controller. There are many controllers, right? You go to school, the teacher will say, I'm the controller, right? And you go into office, you go into some company, the boss will say, I'm the control. And you go at home, the wife will say, I'm the control. Who's the supreme control? There's one supreme control. And that controller over everyone is Lord Sri Krishna. But Lord Sri Krishna likes to enjoy. Like all of us, they all like to enjoy. They all like to suffer. Why do we like to enjoy? That is the nature of the soul. The soul wants to enjoy. Our spiritual nature is to enjoy. In the spiritual world, you will enjoy eternally. Here in this world, you have to work so hard to enjoy just a little. We have to tolerate so much. So much difficulty, working, difficult conditions, and then I, then you get a break. You can go back to India and you think, oh, you can enjoy for a little while. Then you have to come back and work again. Right? So that material world is like that. A lot of work to get a little enjoyment. But in the spiritual world, eternal enjoyment. It's all enjoyment. And Krishna is inviting all of us to go back there. And that's why he comes. And that's why he sends also devotees like Srila Prabhupada. He sends his pure devotees here to guide us and to teach us and to help us out of this ignorance condition. So one of the ways in which Krishna helped us was by performing his Damodar Lila. We've been celebrating this Damodar Lila for one month now. Today is the last day of Karti. So today is the final day in which we offer this worship to Lord Damodar. But it's not the end. It's not that, okay, that now it's finished, I don't have to do it anymore. Rather, we want to think we, we should do it every day. We should make it a habit to worship Krishna. We want to develop the good habits. We all have habits. We want to cultivate the good habits. And one of the best habits you can have is to worship Lord Krishna. Just like here. You don't have to have an altar life. You can have a very simple altar, simply have a picture of Lord Krishna and offer worship. And if you don't like to even have a picture, you can do it in your mind. Even within your mind, you can simply try to worship Krishna. 
the, the form of the Lord comes in different ways. You can have Krishna made from wood, just like Jagannath. Jagannath is Darumarti, right? Made out of wood. And then some other deities like in Mayapur, we have Radha Madhava. They're made from stone, marble. But then we have Panchatadva, and they're made from bronze. And then you can have also a deity made of paint, oils. Some people will worship pictures, <coughs> beautiful pictures. And other people, they will make the form of Krishna out of jewels. They will simply use jewels to make them. And people will also worship Krishna in their mind. But to worship in the mind is more difficult. That is very difficult. Why? Very hard to control the mind. The mind is restless. More difficult. Arjuna, even Arjuna said he could not control his mind. And Arjuna was a great devotee. He was a Maharati and he was, you know, he had a very great birth in the Pandavas and the Kuru dynasty and its association with Lord Krishna. But still he said, Chanchalahi Mana Krishna. My mind is chanchal, restless, more restless than the wind. Just like the wind, you don't get wind here much, here in Dubai, not much. You want wind? Go to England. <laughs> Very cold, nasty wind. But here in Dubai, not much wind at all. But Krishna said, I know it's difficult. But still, you can do it. Krishna said, Asam Shayam Mahabaho Manu Durni Braham Chalam. And then what does he say? Yes, Abhyas, Abhyas. You all know this word Abhyas, right? Practice. You have to practice. <laughs> and Vairag, you know that also. Detachment. We have to let go. Let go of the material to hold on to the spiritual. Now, what is spiritual? What is material? That should be understood. Material means that which is simply for our own sense enjoyment. And spiritual means that which is for the service of Krishna. So just like here, we have an altar for the service of Krishna. We, we have a home. We're using it for Krishna, inviting so many people to come here. In this way, the home is a spiritual place. It becomes even a holy place by using it for the service of Krishna. So matter can become spirit. You can change the material things into spiritual things. Just like there was one famous sadhu from India. He had a picture taken with money on the table and he was like this. He was going, I will not touch the money. And people thought, oh, he's a great sadhu. <laughs> but below the table had a lot <laughs> He was pretending, I won't touch the money. All the money was all over the age. So, Srila Prabhupada said, we will take the money and use it all for Krishna, to build nice temples and places for Krishna. And those of you who go to our temples, you can see beautiful temples, beautiful te and with beautiful deity worship, and prasadam, and so many arrangements. How many of you have been to our temple, Iskon temple in India? Yes, you've all been somewhere. Eh? Maybe Mayapur, or Vrindavan, or Delhi, or 
Madras, Hyderabad, Trivandrum, everywhere now we've got temples in India. I had gone to India 1975. Were you born yet? No. <laughs> <laughs> you were not even born. Where were you? You were an old man or an old lady somewhere. <laughs> yeah, where were you? I was in India preaching. Where were you? <laughs> now you've taken this for you. You should understand reincarnation is a fact. It's not a myth. We're all souls living in the body. This body is like the vehicle. One of the devotees, uh, actually, was His Holiness Bhakti Charuswami. Have you heard? Do you know him? Yes. Yeah, Bhakti Charuswami. So he had a heart problem one time. He'd gone to a hospital. So his disciples were very worried, you know. They were, he, has a, he had that temple in Gujain, yeah. and uh, he made a nice temple there in Gujain. So he'd gone to a hospital to get some treatment for his heart. And when he came back, the disciples, they were all so worried. Oh, Guru Maharaj, we were so worried about you. And he said to them, why are you worried? He said, why are you worried? If you get a new car, do you worry about the old car? Huh? You get the new car. Wow, well, oh, very good. Yeah? <laughs> why worry about the old car? We're happy. The same way, we give up the old body, you get a new body. But of course, you have to think, what kind of body you going to get? If we become a dog in the next life, it's not very good. <laughs> right? Prabhupada used to say, dog is running on four legs, and you're all running on four wheels. Business is the same. Where is food? Where is sleep? The dog mentality. So we want to be thoughtful, to think about where are we going in the next, next life. So this life is an opportunity for us to prepare for the future. Where do you want to go? You want to come back in Dubai? Good. You take birth again in India? <laughs> Not so bad. India becoming better, more opulent. Huh? But still the problems are that you may not get the human body. Now you have a human life. There's no guarantee next life you will again be human. Where do you want to take your birth? What do you, where do you want to be? You have to prepare for the future. So very important to understand the value of association. The Sangha with the devotees, very, very important for us to keep us in consciousness of the goal of life. We have to hear regularly. We have to come to be with the devotees. It helps us to remember Krishna, to bring Krishna into our daily life. If we're just on our own every day, then it's very easy to forget Krishna. And you become and you start to think, oh, now we have G5. Oh, now I can watch so many Netflix and so many things on the. Oh, don't even need to go to cinema. I just have my mobile phone and I can watch movies all day. Oh, Tamil movies, wonderful. Oh, yeah. I know in Malaysia, I, sometimes I go to Malaysia and preach. So there's a lot of Tamil people there. And every Saturday afternoon, they have Tamil movies on television. So well, it's not every Saturday afternoon, everyone's at home. And what are they all doing? They're all watching Tamil movies. The movies... Yeah, and similarly, of course, you have Bollywood, you know, we spend, but how much time do you spend watching these kind of things? How much time we allow these things to occupy our life? 
And certainly they influence us. They influence our mind because you're associating with all of these people, all of these movie stars, Bollywood people. Are they pious people? No. Do they have any good habits? No. We have nothing to learn from them. So we have to be very careful to cultivate the good habits. Good habit, chanting. Everyone has a japa bag, japa beats. Yes, good. You have to you have to chant. It's very important, and you have to chant every day. Oh, no day off. <laughs> every day you have to chant. I want a day off. You know, you work in a job. When you get a job, you want how many days do I get off, you know? So Japa, no days off. Following the principles. Vegetarians every day, right? Some, you know, in Hong Kong, sometimes I would go into Hong Kong and go to meet Indian businessmen. And I ask them, are you a vegetarian, my dear Mr. Mr. Mushan Dani or whatever his name is, you know, big singer. I'd ask them, are you the vegetarian? Oh, every Thursday. Though that is not real vegetarian. Vegetarian is every Thursday. Of course, for some people, one day is better than nothing. <laughs> and then there was even this one man. The, the, the Sindhi community, they have something called, there was a Sadhu Vaswani there. And so he had to think, ve annual vegetarian, one day in the year, vegetarian. <laughs> it's, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> Not just one day in the year to be vegetarian. These are the kind of things. We have to preach against. We're trying to bring people back to the real culture. The real culture has been lost. It's been forgotten. People have become so ignorant. They eat everything. We and they, they say about Chinese people. Chinese people would everything that flies in the sky, anything that swims in the sea, and anything that crawls in the ground. You go to the market, and in China you can see every all eight million four hundred thousand. <laughs> They're all there in the market. <laughs> so we want to understand what is culture, and culture is not something you learn from America, Coca Cola, McDonald's. That is not culture. That is also ignorance. The real value of life. You have to understand from the Vedic scriptures. We read scriptures, we study books like Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. And there we learn about the nature of the absolute truth. There all of our questions are answered. We find out who I am, why I'm here, where I'm going. So this thing, this question, everything is answered there in the scriptures. We have to be willing to inquire and to hear. Human life is meant for inquiry. The Vedanta Sutra says, Brahma Jignasa. We should know what is the difference between the material and the spiritual. You know, sometimes a person will say, Oh, I had a I went out with my girlfriend last night. We had a very spiritual evening. <laughs> what is spiritual and what is material? The spiritual is to be in relationship to Krishna. That is actually spiritual. So this month we're celebrating. This is the last day. This is also the end of the chapter of Mashiya. And this is also the final day of the Bhishma Pancha. And this evening is the time when everyone will break their fast and end their vows. People will be uh, 
doing different vows, some people doing more chanting. We have been doing mainly worshipping. We've been worshipping Dhammada and offering gilas, right? We're going to offer gilas. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's our vow. Today we'll do it. And maybe if you like, you do it in the evening also. And that's the end of the Dhammada prayer. And of course, when we offer the land, at that time we also, within our heart, we also pray to Lord Krishna that we can develop that attachment for him and to think of him more and to remember him and to remember that he is the master and we are his tiny servants. This is the, our position. We may think, oh, to be the servant is not, oh, I, I'm always a servant. I want to be the master. But actually, there's more pleasure to be the servant than to be the master. And that is why Krishna came himself as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, to be the servant and to show us how to serve Krishna, to show us how to surrender to Krishna by chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. Simply by chanting the whole name, we can get all the Okay, are there any questions? Anyone want to ask any question? Yes. Yes. So, I told you how to chant Why have to chant Why not just Every week they are chanting well, they may chant Bhagavad Gita Svokas, that's nice, it's Krishna's words, but do they understand the Bhagavad Gita Svoka? They may be chanting the Bhagavad Gita Svoka, do they know what Krishna is saying? Can they understand the message of the Bhagavad Gita? If they understood the message of the Bhagavad Gita, then they would chant Hare Krishna. Because the message of the Bhagavad Gita is to chant the glories of the Lord, to chant his name. And Krishna says many times that he can be understood by devotion. And so how, if you have devotion, then you will chant the name of Krishna. You won't just chant Bhagavad Gita. So many people may read Bhagavad Gita, chant Bhagavad Gita. They don't, they're not even devotees. They don't even believe in Krishna. And they will talk nonsense about Krishna. There are so many commentaries on Bhagavad Gita. How many people became devotees? So many comments, so many editions of Bhagavad Gita are there. Where are the devotees? The devot no devotees came from all of these commentaries because all of these people wrote nonsense about the Bhagavad Gita. They didn't know the message of Bhagavad Gita. But when Prabhupada wrote Bhagavad Gita as it is, then people started to become devotees. And then there were Krishna temples. There were no temples of Krishna hardly in the West. Now there are temples. Prabhupada brought Krishna there. Prabhupada taught people to chant Hare Krishna. So we have to tell people here, the message of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is saying, surrender to me. If you surrender, then you should chant. If you're not chanting, then you've not understood Bhagavad Gita. Just like people may re recite the Vedas, simply mouthing the words of the Vedas. Useless. No better. So they, they read the Bhagavad Gita. So reading is one thing. Better than reading is to discuss and to explain. So you t you're reading Bhagavad Gita. Tell me, what does Krishna say in the Bhagavad Gita then? You're reading it. Tell me. What's the message? What's Krishna's teaching? Yes? Yes, for me? Okay. 
Prabhu is asking about the Bhisma Panchaka. Bhisma Panchaka is just the last five days of this month of Karti. So it said, if, if you didn't do anything, you didn't make any vows or do anything or follow, follow very strictly during the Chaturmasya, which is four months, you didn't do anything there very well, then the last five days you can make a special vow during the last five days to do more, to make up for what you didn't do over the four months. So this Bhisma Panishat is an opportunity for us to catch up what we didn't do, you know, maybe we, we fell behind, we didn't do, didn't keep up our vows. So the last five days, it began on the Ekadasi and today is the Purnima. So for the five days, some people will do things like, like His Holiness Jaipataka Swami Maharaj, every year he would do Bhisma Pancha, and he's at Mayapur usually this time, and he'll be following, he'll just be eating fruits and roots. Just taking fruits and fruits. And doing more chanting and hearing. This is a real purpose. Whenever we do some kind of fasting, of course we're fasting every day. Fasting from meat, fish and eggs, right? Mm -hmm. That's that's compulsory fasting. <laughs> no meat, fish and eggs, right? And I mean, you can do more chanting. More chanting and more time to set Krishna. So this Mahpanchat is this opportunity for us to catch up from what we didn't do in the other four, four months or the four months, just trying to do something at the end to make up for it. So my question is like uh, my first question is like when we do the direct fasting and uh, what is the procedure to make the fast or uh, to be finished with that fasting? And my second question is what happens to the soul? We were saying like uh, in 1975 we were in Glen Kitchen and uh, where did we? So I was just thinking like what what will happen to the soul as we see the lives? So the pain is there right in the face of the uh, so is it uh, is it immediately happens or uh, it takes some time for the soul to go to the other room? The Bhisma Panchat, you want to break your fast, you have to wait for moonrise. When the moon rises, at that time, then you should worship the Lord first, and then you should break your fast. What kind of fasting are you doing? What? Fruits and roots. Huh? Fruits and roots. Fruits and roots. Yeah. Okay, so then tonight we can take some grain. Actually, the general devotee will make some kind of feast, some special feast, you know, just to offer to the Lord and then take some nice prasadam. That's in the evening, after the afternoon. And then, uh, your other question about the soul at the time of death, how long does it take to get a new body? It's not hard and fast. It will be different for different people. Sometimes, you know, for people more in the mode of goodness, devotees and like that, then it's much more quicker. But for people who are more simple, then it takes more time. So often that the simple people will be taken to Yama. Yamaraj, they'll go to Yamalok and Yamaraj will punish them, they'll get some suffering. The soul goes along with the subtle body. At the time of death, the soul leaves the body and the subtle body, the mind also goes with the soul, carries us. So we go to Yamalok and then if you're punished there, then you come back, then you take a lower force, and gradually come up to the human form. So it takes some time. Sometimes people in Sinpo, they don't get a, bo a body, they, they're in the ghost body or something. But for devotees, usually it's not too much trouble. That quickly they, they can go and the arrangement will be made for the next life. Garuda Purana says more. You can get a copy of the Garuda Purana or you can go on the internet and 
get better to put on a, a lot of information about these things, what happens at the time of death. And so, Srimad Bhagavatam was told also about what happens about materialistic people, how they're taken out of the body, and where, how they go to the MLO. Descriptions are all there. But that's in the third canto. Third canto, at the end of third canto, chapter 31, 32. You can get information there. Srimad Bhagavatam. By chanting Hare Krishna. Very simple. The more you chant Hare Krishna and the more you engage in devotional service, then that feeling will come. We, sometimes we give the example, just like you get hit on the head. You now some people you get hit on the head, they lose their memory. The memory all gone. Maybe you're in a, there was one magic she we had, she was in a bad car crash. So she's in a coma for a long time. When she come back to consciousness, she couldn't remember anything. She couldn't remember even her husband. Husband came before her. She didn't know. So she had to be introduced to everyone. This is your husband, this is your mother, this is your father, like that. So it takes some time to get the memory back. And the same way, we are like that. We have forgotten who we are. We've forgotten our spiritual nature. So we come to the temple. We go to the temple, we stand in front of the deities. And we have to be told, you're not the body, you're a soul living in the body. You have to hear. You have to hear again and again. And gradually we start to remember. Because we've lost the memory. We've forgotten our real spiritual identity. So it takes time. We have to be reminded. Devotee association will help you to remember us. Every time you come and associate with the devotees, they always remind you, you're not the body, you're a soul. Just like we go to the temple, we remember, bow down to Krishna. Krishna is the master, I am his self. <clears throat> you don't go to the temple, you don't associate with the devotees, definitely you'll think you're the body. You look in the mirror and decorate yourself. <laughs> Right? And then we start to make young, the body, very nice. <laughs> we have to be careful. So we have to, association, you have to come, you have to hear about Krishna, you have to chant, you have to worship Krishna. Gradually, the memory starts to come, start to. We have to understand, we've been in this world, material world, a very long time. We're very conditioned, so we're really forgetful, we're very forgetful, our, our real spiritual identity is covered over many, because many, many lives we've had in this world, we've taken birth, we're just thinking this life, we're just thinking, oh, I'm 30 years old, or I'm 40 years old, whatever, we're thinking, I'm a woman, we don't know. We don't know our spiritual identity. We identify with this body. So we have to, that, that is called conditioning. That we're conditioned souls. <laughs> so we can become liberated souls by Krishna consciousness. We practice chanting Hare Krishna and doing service for Krishna then that condition will all be ready. So it takes time. You have to be patient 
and you have to be determined. So that and Rupa Desha Rita Rupa Goswami describes things which you have to do to progress. Enthusiasm, patience, and determination. So Prabhupada said, in everything you need to have these three qualities. Whatever you do, you have to have enthusiasm, you have to be patient, you have to be determined. Yes, Mahadi. Maharaj, I have a very specific goal on my mind all the time because I have seen, I have seen, I have read of uh, one lecture where a um, devotee asked the question regarding that we have come from Goloka and there are chances that we can fall away. So my question is, if we are, for example, if I am in Krishna conscious this life, and ultimately some project Krishna Mercy and Gopal Mohi, I go back to Goloka. Is there a chance that I again come back and again fall down into this material world? Well, Lord Krishna says, one who comes to my abode will never leave. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, one who comes to my abode will never leave. You never want to go back. Just like, what is it? If you're living in Dubai, maybe some people, they never want to go back to India. <laughs> Sometimes, you know? The children, probably. They never want to go back to India when they come to Dubai. So, you, you, you go to Goloka, you never want to come back to this world. Now we were saying that we were once we told that we were not sitting at the end of the past. So, I'm glad that we have to be able 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 to so that's why, as soon as we become envious of Krishna, because we want to be Krishna. We want to be the Supreme. We don't want to keep Krishna in the center. We want to put our own self in the center. So then we come in the material world. That's how we go. We all have that distance. That's why we're all here. Not often, we're all here. And is it possible for you to share the past and can I make sure that you can find out? No. <laughs> 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 no, I don't know. So many things. We should do it down that first now. Huh? Just leave. Just leave. Okay. You want to hear me tell you that you can go. Many other best things I spoke about this book. There's some of them already. Hare Shogra Pati Jai! Recording stopped. Can I? Can I just have one more piece?